Hi students and friends, this is your host and teacher, Sayyid Ayazuddin Haider and you are watching Learn and Teach by Sarayaz. So I was doing the paper 0620 for the year 2023 and the variant is 22. I am done till question number 25 so I will continue from question number 26. Here's question number 26. P, Q, R, and S are metals. P reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, forming hydrogen. Q reacts voluntarily with water. R reacts with water to give hydrogen. S is formed by heating its oxide with carbon. Which row identifies the metals? Now here, metals are copper, sodium, Potassium, iron, zinc, magnesium, calcium. So we have these metals. So first of all, I'm going to place these metals according to the reactivity series. So you know that potassium is the most reactive. K is the symbol for potassium. So I'm writing the K for potassium. Then we have sodium. Na is the symbol for sodium. Then we have Calcium, Ca, Magnesium, Mg. Then we have Zinc, Iron, then Copper. Remember between Copper and Iron, there is Hydrogen. So these are the metals from the series. So let's uh, see the identity of is PQRS using this series. Now, if you look at uh, the reaction of Q, Q it's reacting voluntarily with water. So Q must be potassium, K. Then you are having R react with water to give hydrogen. So if you look at the series, you can have R as either Na, Ca, or Mg because these reacts with water. Other reacts before hydrogen with steam, that is hot water, does not react with water. So R can either be Na, Ca, or Mg. What about P? P is reacting with dilute hydrochloric acid. You can't be having copper as P. You can either have zinc or iron as P. What about S? S is formed by heating its oxide with carbon. So S, you can either have Fe or Zn. Now, if you look at the choices, uh, in P, they are saying copper, zinc, iron. So, what is the possibility? You can, uh, you cannot have A as the correct answer. You either, you can have either B, C or D as your correct answer. Now, let's look at the identity of Q. Now, in the question, they are saying Q reacts violently with water. It must be potassium. So, D looks correct to me. So I'm reading the other choices. R, what is the identity of R? R is reacting with water. You can have sodium, calcium, or magnesium. So we have sodium, this is also correct. S, you can have either iron or zinc as S. So D will be the right answer for this question. Number 27, which compound is formed when iron rust? When iron rust, it forms hydrated iron 3 oxide. This is a formula for hydrated iron 3 oxide. Fe2O3 dot XH2O. So in this case, D must be the right answer. 28. Why is cryolite used in the extraction of aluminium by electrolysis? Cryolite is used to decrease the melting point melting point 
of aluminum oxide of, or alumina or to dissolve or to increase the conductivity conductivity of aluminum oxide so we have only one choice that is correct in this case it dissolves the aluminum oxide a will be the right answer in this case for your convenience i am reading the other choices it protects the anode from corrosion this is wrong c it changes bauxite to aluminum oxide this is also incorrect it's not not used to convert bauxite to aluminum oxide aqueous sodium hydroxide is used to remove the impurities in order to get the aluminum oxide d it decreases the melting point of the aluminum this is also incorrect so a will be the right answer for this question 29 a wax candle is made from a mixture of hydrocarbons the candle is lit and placed in a gas jar along with a strip of cobalt 2 chloride test paper as shown cobalt 2 chloride paper this is a cobalt 2 chloride paper this is the gas jar now you are having wax candle at the bottom and here we are having combustion products i am writing the combustion products of wax candle as they have mentioned in the question it's a mixture of hydrocarbon so you must be getting carbon dioxide carbon monoxide steam or water uh, and in the end you are you will be left with unburned carbon or soot after a short time the oxygen in the jar is used up and the candle flame goes out which substance does the cobalt to chloride paper identify so definitely uh, as you all know cobalt to chloride paper is used to identify or to test water to test water h2o so d will be the right answer for this mcq number 30 the hydrocarbon c4h8 has two structural isomers butyl-1-ene and butyl-2-ene which statement is correct a butyl-2-ene has the structural formula ch3 ch double bond ch ch3 and the same general formula as butane butyl-2-ene is alkene but to in is alkene so it can't be having same general formula as butane because butane is alkane this is alkane so a is the incorrect answer in this case b but to in has a structural formula ch3 ch double bond ch ch3 this is correct and the same empirical formula as ethene now I am writing the molecular formula of butene. It is C4H8. What about the molecular formula of ethene? It is C2H4. This is ethene. Butene and ethene. Now let's write the empirical formula for both of these. We will get CH2. So this statement looks correct to me. For your convenience, I am reading the other statements. Butene has the structure formula CH3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2. This is correct. And the same general formula as butane. Again, this is wrong because butane is an alkane and butene is alkene. This is incorrect. D, butene has the structure formula CH3, CH, CH2, double bond, CH. This is incorrect. The formula is incorrect. So no need to read the uh, last uh, uh, statement for this one. Obviously, B will be the right answer for this question. Number 31, which compound rapidly decolorizes aqueous bromine? This is the test used to identify alkenes or unsaturated. organic compounds this is an easy one so propene will be the right answer for this question other choices are incorrect because propane is an alkane does not decolorize propanoic or acid does not react with aqueous bromine propanol also does not react with 
act was broken. 32. What are the products of the addition reactions of ethene with bromine and hydrogen? What is the formula of ethene? This is the formula of ethene, C2H4. When it reacts with bromine, the formula for bromine, Br2, we will get C2H4Br2 or CH2Br, CH2Br. When it's reacted with hydrogen, we will get alkane and that is C2H6 or CH3, CH3. So obviously A will be the right answer in this case. Other choices are incorrect because in B, they are saying CH2Br, CH2Br, this is correct, but CH2, CH2, after adding hydrogen, this is incorrect. C, CH3, CH2, Br, this is incorrect. The reason is that uh, Br2 is added. So you must have two Br atoms in the uh, molecule of uh, ethene. This is correct. D, CH3, CH2, Br, again, this is incorrect. After adding hydrogen, CH2, CH2, this is also incorrect. 33, ethanol is manufactured by fermentation and the catalytic addition of steam to ethene. Which row describes an advantage of both methods? Now, let's read the advantage of uh, both of these methods. I will read uh, the statements one by one. A, from sugar by fermentation, just ethanol needs to be purified. This is not the advantage, so no need to read the other statement. A is incorrect. B, it's a batch process. And from ethene and steam, ethene comes from petroleum. Petroleum is not a renewable resource, so this is also not an advantage. So B is also incorrect. C, the process is slow, so this is also not an advantage. Obviously, D will be the right answer for this question. Renewable resources are used when we are preparing alcohol from fermentation of sugar. And the ethanol produced is pure when we are getting ethanol by reacting ethene and steam. So D will be the right answer for this multiple choice question. 34, methanoic acid and propane when all react to form an ester. What is the structure formula of the ester? Now methanoic acid, we will get methanoate ion from it, which is H C double O minus. And from propane, one all we will get alkyl that is propyl and it must be ch3 ch2 ch2 three carbon so after combining these two we must have we must get h c double o ch2 ch2 ch3 so A will be the right answer in this case. For your convenience, I am reading the other formulas also in B. CH3, CH2, C double O, CH3. This is incorrect because this is methyl propanoate. This is methyl propanoate. This is methyl group. C, we are getting ethyl propanoid this is ethyl group this one is ethyl group this one is methyl the top one we are getting propyl last one ch3 ch2 ch2 c double oh this is wrong this is acid this is carboxylic acid so this is wrong 35 what is the correct structure of PET. What is PET? PET is polyester. So it must be having ester group. So the only molecule having ester group is this one, P. These are the ester group. It is polyester. So B will be the right answer. In A, we are having amide group. This is amide group. So this is incorrect. C, again we are having amide group. So this is also incorrect. In D, we are having one ester group and one carbonyl group, which is not part of your syllabus. So D is incorrect. 
So for 35, B will be the right answer. 36, alkanes undergo substitution reactions in the presence of ultraviolet light. Which equation represents a substitution reaction of ethane? So when ethane reacts uh, with chlorine, we will get the substituted products. We will get two products. We will get haloalkane and hydrogen halide or hydrogen chloride in this case. So obviously C and D is incorrect. We are left with A and B. So either A is correct or B is correct. So in A, C2H6 plus Cl2 gives C2H4, which is ethene. This is incorrect. So obviously A is incorrect. B will be the right answer for number 36. Methane reacts with chlorine in substitution reactions. How many different products containing a single carbon atom can be made? during the reactions. So when you are reacting methane with chlorine, you will get these substitution products CH3Cl, CH2Cl2, CHCl3, CCl4 and the last one HCl. Now they are saying how many products involving single carbon atom? So we have one, two, three, four. So C must be the right answer for this question. 38. 38. Rock salt is a mixture of salt and sand. The method used to separate the sand from the salt is listed. Step one, crush the rock salt, add to warm water and stir. Step two, pour the mixture through a filter paper held in a funnel. Step three, evaporate the water to crystallize the salt. Which statement about the method is correct? The filtrate is in step two is pure water. No, filtrate is not a pure water. It must be having salt in it. A is incorrect. B, the residue in step two is pure crystals of salt. This is also incorrect. Residue is the insoluble part of the salt, which is sand in this case. C. The solute is salt. Now, this is correct. Solute we are getting is salt. So C must be the right answer. For your convenience, I am reading the last statement. The solvent is a mixture of salt and water. Now solvent is not a mixture of salt and water. It's a water only. Number 39. Two compounds M and N are dissolved in water and separated by chromatography. The results are shown. So here we have chromatography paper. What is the RF value of M and which compound is most soluble in water? So if you want to calculate the RF value of M, we have to divide 2 by 10. So what you will get when you divide 2 by 10? 2 divided by 10, 0.2. So either A is correct or B is correct. C and D is incorrect. Now, next point is that which compound is most soluble in water? Definitely the one which has traveled most. So, in this case, it must be N. So, B will be the right answer for this question. The last question, when acid is added to salt X, a gas is produced which turns lime water milky. When sodium hydroxide is added to salt X, a gas is produced which turns Litmus paper blue. What is X? Now, when acid is added to salt, X, the gas is produced which turns lime water milky. So, gas must be carbon dioxide and the gas is coming from the carbonate ion. So, it must be having carbonate ion. The salt must be having carbonate ion. So, either A is correct, B is correct or D is correct. C is incorrect. Now, next point. When sodium hydroxide is added to salt, X, a gas is produced which turns litmus paper blue. It must be the ammonium ion. So when ammonium ion is reacted with sodium hydroxide, it produces a gas, which is ammonia, and it turns litmus paper to blue. So obviously, choice B will be the right answer in this case. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.